Hey Monster Hobbies Mechanics, how are you doing today? Welcome back to the second video of my fun continuing build of this 1964 Custom Impala. Ugh. <laughs> That's too close and personal, I think. Anyway, so we're going to go down to the bench in just a minute and take a look at how I'm progressing on this build. I know it's been a little while. I've been trying to get everything uploaded on my website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. The place where you want to go to check out model cars and many, many more things. Currently, I'm uploading a whole bunch of collector cards and that just drags on forever. But uh, don't forget to check that out. It's a good website. I can ship all around the world and everything else. So without further ado, let's keep this video nice and fun and exciting. Because I seem to have run out of fun and exciting. So let's just put that back in. <laughs> okay, let's go to the bench and see what I've been working on. Here's an update on the Impala. So what I've done is I've cleaned up the undercarriage here and I'm going to paint that semi-gloss black. And then we've got the firewall and the radiator as well as the horn. I have to take these parts off the parts tree, clean them up, and I will put them onto the same box and spray paint the two together just so that the one color is used throughout both. Again, nice detail on that firewall. <laughs> uh, I was looking up these cars and they are all semi-gloss black under in the engine bay. And I'm going to uh, build mine as if a teenager is working on this car back in 64, because that's what they did. Now one thing that I had to do here on the back end is actually take off this piece because there was quite a gap in between the bottom of the trunk lid and the rolled pan component. So I used a little evergreen strip styrene and just put it right inside there. And uh, you can kind of see the white line. Now hopefully when I paint this, it won't really stand out. It'll blend in, I hope. I am going to add some putty on here as well, which I still haven't done. But I did put in some of that strip styrene up in here just to reinforce that front end so that when I'm putting in the uh, putty and filling it, this won't flex and knock it all off. So that's basically where I'm at with the body. So let me uh, paint this thing and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Actually, there is one thing I want to show just before I get to painting this. And that is the actual notches that I made in here, just so that those wheels would fit in, like I was saying previously. I used a Sharpie and just put the wheel in place and then marked around the outside of that rim and uh, notched it out with my number 16 hobby blade. And now those wheels actually do snug up against that rear axle. So that's what I want to show just before I painted it and covered it all up. Again, this model kit is really nice, but there are a few things you have to tweak just to get it right. Here we have the undercarriage after the application of the semi-gloss black paint. I did apply two coats onto this, and as you can see, I've got it taped down to this cardboard box. So there's the chassis, the radiator support, our firewall, and right here I've got our little horns. So let's see how this looks once we get rid of the box. Here's what our parts look like once we remove them from the cardboard box, which of course makes it look a lot easier to uh, visualize. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these mufflers and tailpipes all silver. And I'm going to do that off camera because I really want to listen to some Iron Maiden while I'm doing this. <laughs> and of course that's all copyright protection. Now one thing I did notice though is that uh, it does look like I missed a little bit here when spraying from this angle in uh, our engine bay. So there's really two ways I can fix this. One is to, you know, take this separately and spray paint it again, but that'll take another week to dry because I'm using enamel paints. Yeah, see right here it's a little thin, but I don't know if that's going to make a difference because that'll be up against our firewall. But it's really right in here that's the uh, major visual indicator. Now what I could do really is just get some gloss black and just paint that with a brush on there and that would just cover over all the sins easily. Here we have our 64 Chevy Impala, and I've just basically dry fitted this just to test how the fit and finish is inside the fenders and under the hood. Now what we have here is the interior just sitting in there, a little bit of it, and we've got our firewall in there, 
and there's our inner fender wells. Now you can't really see the imperfection of the spray on the back of these fender wells, but you can see it in there where the axle's going to go, so I definitely will have to paint that with the uh, gloss black. There's our radiator housing is going to fit on there. Now um, this whole wall here needs to be painted with the gloss black or semi-gloss black. But as you can see, the horns look like they're going to be able to fit back in here, in that little hole. I do believe they go on the other side, though, which is going to be interesting to try to get them in there. But, uh, well, I can put them in and then pinch this together. But if we turn this over, you can see just how nice this looks from underneath. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to paint the exhaust pipes and mufflers with some silver or steel paint. You can see here that it's uh, the color of the plastic. So this area will also have to be painted black or maybe even flat black just for a bit of contrast. But that'll make it all disappear once uh, it's painted the proper colors. Again, very nicely done by AMT. There's our exhaust pipes just sticking out there. Again, this will look nice when painted. So I'm going to paint it off camera so I can listen to some Iron Maiden without uh, running the risk of getting a copyright strike on this video. So here we have our chassis with our exhaust pipes painted on, and this I did using Tester's Silver and a good brush. I also painted these little ring loops that are on here that hold the exhaust system to the actual chassis. So if we just bring this up to the camera, you can see how, uh, how I did on that. Turned out pretty nice just doing this freehand. Didn't use any uh, magnifying glass or anything like that, just painted straight on there. Again, I did that quite nicely very little touch up if any at all so what i've done here is i've painted on the little radiator cap on the top of the radiator with that silver and then uh, i also took the silver and went on the back of the wheel here because this was just a gray plastic as you can see there so it did need some touch up and i also applied it to the end of the wheel cap in here of course, that's going to be where our axle goes in and it'll go up against there. I don't know if you're going to really see that too much, but it does kind of knock down that coloration. And then one thing I noticed about our firewall, which is really odd, whoops, is that uh, it's actually incorrect. <laughs> now, one thing about it is it doesn't have a brake master or a brake booster behind the master cylinder here, but that's okay because it could be more of a you know, unboosted brakes, which wasn't too uncommon back in the 60s. Um, the thing that's odd is right here is the windshield wiper bottle. And I'm going to show you a picture of the engine bay. So there you can see that this windshield wiper bottle actually goes up against the radiator. What's supposed to be here is the motor, which I do believe is this cylinder sticking out here which I don't know if you can see that too well. But uh, yeah, there's a cylinder sticking out of here at a weird angle, sort of a 45 degree angle one way and almost like a 20 degree angle upward. And I think that is supposed to be the motor for the windshield wiper, which is actually supposed to be here where the windshield wiper bottle is. So again, I just painted the booster, or sorry, the master cylinder, I should say, instead of uh, trying to figure that out and how to adjust for it. But anyway, there you go, and that's how it looks. Just to be on the safe side, I thought I would look at the instructions again and see if I noticed any other errors, and I did find a good one here. As you can see, the battery is shown to come across here and be located on this side of the radiator support wall, just directly in front of the steering wheel. But if you look at the actual Impala from the picture, and we'll look at that again, You can see that the battery actually glues on this side, just uh, where those horns are. So again, quite interesting that AMT would have actually located the battery in the wrong position, as well as located the windshield wiper bottle in the wrong location. Hey, in case you guys are wondering, you know in the videos you always see Danny the dog and he's talking and he's got these drawers behind him? Well, I thought I'd show you really quickly in this video what's actually in these drawers. So. Here I got steel wheels and I got factory wheels. See, I, I made little uh, sticker tabs and wrote on here. Factory hubcaps, baby moons, wire wheels, slot mags, five spoke mag wheels, 
the gasser style. See, there's uh, there they are there. And uh, cyclone wheels and artillery wheels. These are like those style, eh? the flat ones. It's almost a 80 Pontiac. Yeah. And then, um, so then I've got axles. So that Impala kit, I actually found another axle in the box. So there it is sitting in there. The rest are plastic. There's wheel backs. So if you want the uh, old school, I think those are Buick Finn disc brakes. So I c I've got those, some of them. And then 132nd scale wheels. Look at these little Model T ones. They're kind of neat. And then 116th and 120th scale. That's a that's a spare tire cover. What's in here? Oh, those are the little tanks from the surf wagon. Here's the little garbage can things from the... Uh, that one. Oh, the garbage truck. It's a garbage truck. And then uh, this is... <laughs> this is a, a tire rack I made a long time ago as a kid for a diorama. It's got all those... Um, what are those? Those Goodyear... Whatever the heck tires these are. <laughs> Actually, I, I can take one off. Hang on. The thing fell apart on me. It was just white glued. Those are Rally GTs. And then I got my little moving van. That's an old uh, Lindbergh kit for HO. The decal crumbled on me, so I just clear coated it, try to save it as best I could. It uh, really looks crusty. It's almost like my white wall tires. And I got some arrowheads there. I don't know where those came from, but uh, they're there. And then over here, I've also got this styrofoam garage. I gotta finish this thing one day. Maybe I'll make a video of that. So, but anyway, that's the uh, drawers I want to show. Oh, and then there's these ones too. These are all the tires that got caught in the High River flood. Look at how gross and muddy those are. However, I kept them because this is all tires I had from a very long, long time ago. Part of the only things I really got to save out of the collection from what got flooded. And unfortunately, I lost all my decals for <laughs> generations. So this is one of those Goodyears that I cleaned up. And you can see in the tread, there's mud in there. And that looks more like an authentic uh, car tire. To me, anyway. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, muddy fun in there and whatnot. But uh, that's basically what I wanted to show you that's uh, sitting in there behind Danny the dog in these videos. So believe it or not, I was doing some internet research. I know, like it's just so crazy. Actually, it is pretty crazy that we can uh, take a look at our model kit subject and see millions of pictures just by typing in something as simple as 1964 Chevy Impala. But uh, what I did find out is I was always wrong about this car because I figured back here was the gas tank. And it would make sense if you look at it, because it's got the straps in here and uh, all the rest. Now I know it's dimpled because of the screws that go through there, but uh, I always figured this was a gas tank. But then I was looking at the 64 Impalas on the internet, and oh, keep in mind though, uh, like a lot of you on here, we weren't uh, born into this computer world. We actually used to just get by on looking at photographs and sort of things like that and maybe one of these cars would drive by down the road one day and if you got a good quick look you tried to remember everything you could the information wasn't just at your fingertips like it is now with a cell phone or something where you can just type in 64 chevy impala and see every picture known to mankind and see people rebuilding and all kinds of cool fun things it actually was quite a bit of work to figure this out so, you know, being a kid in earlier kits... Actually, let's see something here. Bear with me. Okay, now I, I don't have it on this red Impala. But, uh, at any rate, you know, being a kid, I always thought this was a gas tank. Because that Impala, the red one, I built when I was a kid. So now I'm an old, crusty adult. And uh, <laughs> by looking on the internet, I found out that this is actually the gas tank back here. And if you look at the Impala... There's our red one again. It actually makes sense because right there is a gas door. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but this little area is the gas filler door. So um, I've got a 72 Oldsmobile, 
and it fills under the license plate. You pull the license plate down and there's the uh, fill spout there. So, you know, like, it would make sense that the gas tank would be there in that arrangement, but in the 64 Impala with the door being on the side, well, this is a gas tank. So I painted that gas tank with the Citadel lead belcher. This is like a steel color. You could also use Tester's steel, which maybe I should have done, because the lead be belcher is acrylic, and it was a little bit chunky, because for some reason here in Alberta, my, my uh, paints start drying out and turning chunky. <laughs> so I painted this, and I got brush streaks in it, so I sanded it down a little bit. You can kind of see, and I ended up with some dust in it. But, um, you know, the streakiness on steel actually does look a little bit correct. So uh, don't really worry about that too much, for accuracy's sake. Uh, that's part of the fun I like. I like to make these models accurate. So I'll look up on the internet and in my old magazines and everything and just try to see how accurate I can make it. Because that, to me, is fun, 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 like going down a bicycle on a hill on fire fun. Well, maybe not, but um, anyway. So here's our Krager five-spoke wheels. And I forget, somebody called these something on the web the other day. That was pretty cool. Uh, they used to call them like ice cream cones or something weird because of the the triangular pattern. Hey, if you guys know what I'm talking about, just leave it in the in the uh, comment section down below. What, what was the nickname for these things? Because it's the first time I ever heard it. Um, and then we got our Goodyear Polyglass GT tires. These were the staple of the later 60s. And I took that spinning tool. That's another bit of the fun here. Where's my spinning tool? Here it is. This is what I'm using. My dad made me uh, wooden cones, but they're meant for the drill press, and my chuck broke. And uh, being the impoverished hobby store owner that I am, I couldn't replace the chuck. <laughs> so I had to come up with an alternative. But as you saw in my tire spinning video, which is just up here, coming across. Uh, you, that's the technique on how I got the treads down, so there they are. Now one thing, I'm not sure about putting the white letters on here yet, because I don't know how they will look, you know, on the um, early 60s custom kind of car look. So let's just push the tire in here. There we go. Look at that, eh? That's pretty nice. Now, I also think that maybe this area here should be painted gloss black, just because that's supposed to be your uh, your axle coming out there. But I might leave it chrome. I mean, why not? So what I'm going to do off camera, because I want to listen to my stereo and not get a copyright strike, is I'm going to um, use a little bit of crazy glue. I know, crazy, eh? <laughs> and... I'm going to very carefully, because those axles are shorter, and because I can't find my other 16th inch diameter rod, so I can cut longer axles, I'm just going to very carefully try to crazy glue the axle in. And of course the metal axle will go across here, and into the other wheel on the other side. So I'm going to leave the uh, tires without the white letters for now. And maybe once I get the body painted and everything, in a later video, I'll uh, look back into putting those white letters on or not. It just depends on how this might look, because it might look better just as a black wall, you know, like that, than as uh, white raised letters on there. I think that might actually detract from the look, now that I'm thinking about it. But it would be kind of cool to add, like, the narrow skinny white walls or something. Just to, uh, oops, kind of be like the stock 64. Although, like, you know, as a custom, right, add white walls in. Hey, look at this. My white wall's falling off. That's really odd. I didn't notice that before. I wonder what happened there. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, like, that's weird. If you know why my white wall fell off, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> Maybe there's a white wall virus going around. I don't know. Is that what's happening up in England? Maybe, uh, maybe Pete knows. Maybe it uh, blew over here like avian flu. <laughs> anyway, I'm just joking around. Okay, so uh, let me finish that up and we'll take a look at it in a minute. Here's the chassis after I got the wheels in. 
Now, I was talking about the crazy glue. What I found is that inside the wheel, the hole is pretty sloppy on these, except for on the other side, it seems like they're tighter. So they sort of, um, how can I put it? At the top, they widen out, but then they straighten in as you go down the hole. Now, the longer axles would actually go all the way down there and straighten up, but because these axles were cut a bit shorter, I had to put a little bit of crazy glue on the end of the metal axle and uh, carefully push the wheel in just a bit on the one side, so maybe about to there, if you can see that, to about there. And then I had to uh, manipulate the wheel around before that crazy glue completely seized up in there so that when we spin our wheels, ah, let's see if I can get this. See, when we spin our wheels, you want that uh, wheel and tire to move perfectly uh, in line, if you know what I mean, like these, and not to have one wheel wobbling like this, or, you know, going like this or whatever. So, like, you don't want it uh, rolling like this on there, you know what I mean? Even just a slight bit. I know that's over-exaggerated. Or walking like this as it spins. So here I've got that nice Krager on there pretty well. This one might have a little bit of walk in it, but uh, here. If I take and bend the tire a bit, let's just pretend. So you'd you don't want the wheel flopping like that. You see it? You want it nice and smooth, like on that side. So if I just uh, maneuver that tire back in... Remember, this is all part of the fun. <laughs> I think part of the fun with this is just to make sure you get everything right. Yeah, I still got a little bit out with that tire. Okay, well, I'll perfect that out later. <laughs> but at any rate, that's what you want it to go for. So, uh, oh, and one other thing. Now, with these, you've got two holes. Ah, there you go. you got two holes. So the top one is the lowered version, and the bottom is the stock ride height. Now, as you're pushing your metal axle through here, of course, you can see it's easy to get through the top hole on this side. But when you come to this side, you, you've got a tendency to walk that axle. So always make sure you're going into the same hole on either side because it's very easy to uh, get the wheel in that bottom hole, for example. And then up here, you're wondering what the heck is going on and not realizing that, uh, you know, the front axle is going downhill. So definitely make sure that if you're putting it in the top hole, you're putting it in the top hole on the other side. I know it's silly. I've done it before. Uh, luckily, I didn't glue the wheel on when I did that. Okay, so you notice I don't have this tire on. And the reason for that is we still have the engine to go in the engine bay. And uh, here it doesn't have the oil pan. So you can see it's an easy drop. It doesn't really matter at this stage, right? So uh, let's get that engine in there. Oops. Without making everything fall all over the place. Top hole to top hole. Okay, now I'm using my left hand. This in itself is an amazing feat. There, dropped in. All right, so we don't have the oil pan, so this is an easy drop, as it were. But in our next video, in the next video, no, uh, no um, spoilers. No, anyway, in our next video, I'm going to glue this engine together, and I'm going to glue on the the oil pan, of course. Now the oil pan has the other part of that hole and it will be flat on the top. So once I glue the oil pan on, I won't be able to drop the engine in from the top. So that's why I'm leaving this one wheel off for right now so that I can glue the engine down and then slide the axle through. And the other thing I want to do is take this metal axle from about here in there and paint all the way to the end with gloss black so that uh, when we stick it through, you don't see a metal wire. And that'll also prevent it from rusting. Now, I'm not sure round two is using a new type of metal on these. I think they're plating them or something. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. But on the older axles, they uh, have a tendency to rust out. 
And some of you guys that have been building models for centuries here, you know what I'm talking about, especially if you're living closer to the sea line, you know there's more salt air in, in the air. Um, so if you paint that, not only will it disappear, more or less, from uh, inside, you'll also prevent it from being a big, rusty, ugly-looking axle in years to come. Oh, and one other thing I noticed is... where was that? I actually missed a bit of paint on one of these things. I, I can't tell where it is right now. <laughs> but I saw it when I was doing something, so I know it's there. I'll just have to find it again. Anyway, uh, one thing that we want to check out now... Oh, the other part of it, this too, is take your file and round down the edge of that axle because there's usually a metal burr from where they clipped it off at the factory and that will really make it difficult for you to push the wheel on because there's like a, a blade sticking out if unless you file that down nice and round so okay that's the tip for the day huh. among many others okay let's see how this looks when you put the body on Do 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 Hey, don't copyright that. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I'm gonna zoom the camera out, eh? There we go, eh? Take off, eh? All right. So uh, there we are. Now you can see how low it looks. Let's uh, find our stock Chevy. I don't know, they both look like they're low riders. <laughs> anyway, that's because they are. <laughs> hey, I just realized I mounted the uh, stock car not in the stock configuration. I actually lowered this thing. Never realized that before. Well, anyway, I got another one upstairs that's the proper ride height, but let's not worry about that. So, uh, yeah, there it is with the black walls. And I don't, even at that, I think it. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't put the white letters on. Maybe the white letters would spoil it, draw too much attention to the wheels, you know, pull, detract away from the body. Well, anyway, so I still have quite a bit of putty work to do in here. I never did get to that yet. Uh, this is just some uh, what's coming up next. There's a little bit of a dip in there. But overall, you know, I think this is pretty getting, getting there. Let's put the hood on her. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the other thing we have to finish off here is upcoming is the interior. And uh, all this should look good once we get it all together. So, I guess that's it for now. We'll uh, get on the engine next. So, really quickly, I thought I'd just put this on my Lazy Susan just to show you guys what this looks like with our wheels from a front view. It's looking pretty good, eh? What do you think? There's that back end swinging around. I had to put a little strip of styrene in there just to fill the gap. I sure hope that's going to look good when it gets painted. I'm not totally 100% confident in it. But at any rate, there's our smooth-sided uh, 64 Impala Custom with that sort of Plymouth-looking front nose on there. Yeah, I think this is going to look good once I get it all together. So... Let's uh, carry on in life. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where you got to see me working on the undercarriage, the chassis of the model kit. Or maybe it's the chassis shush. I never knew how really to say that word. No, it's chassis. I can't be that crazy, can I? Maybe. Maybe I should check with my psychologist. <laughs> anyway. Well, I don't know if that video was fun, 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 like uh, taking a bicycle and going down a hill like this, you know, super exhilarating. That's uh, one thing I've been thinking about recently, like, just how fun is building a model kit? I mean, really, like, how fun is it scraping seam lines and sanding off trim and that sort of thing? Is it like, yeah, this is, this is okay, or is it like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to go, yeah, 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 like you're going down the hill on the bicycle? Or is it like, uh, you know, becoming a job? <laughs> That's sort of the hard part with making YouTube videos. What distinguishes it between being fun, 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 and being work and a job? <laughs> I don't know. I think some of my unboxing videos are kind of like a job, but uh, 
time to put the fun back. Okay, so anyway, next time around, we'll be doing some more. Hopefully the engine block, which would be lots of fun. And uh, fun, 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 like riding down a hill on a bicycle on fire. <laughs> okay, anyway, till next time, everybody, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Check out our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a link. Actually, if you click one of these buttons down here, it's a link to that very website. So until next time, everybody, keep it fun and happy model building.